I think this is a very challenging time for us in our uh, lives as uh, Sisters of Mercy. We did have, you know, large groups of women in the 50s and 60s who entered with the Sisters. But it is sad to, to know that, you know, we no longer will have women coming to our congregation. And it does, you know, does spell the end of, of a certain period of, of time that was so prosperous for us. The universe begins somewhere between 13.8 and 15 billion years ago. And this is the primordial flaring forth of this tiny little fireball. Everything's in, you can picture the whole of the universe nothing but total blackness, all dark. And all of a sudden, it's like a match goes on. And this huge flaring force comes out. I used to look up at the eclipse when I was very young age, four year old. My mom and dad never told me nothing about the eclipse. I kept down looking up at the sun and the sun just pouring down in my eyes. I need the help, they were there for me. All the sisters, they were there. Yeah. I didn't think I could do anything. But you know, Sister Dorothy said to me, Ramona, how do you know you can't do anything? You never went up and tried. Go off and try. I know you can do it. And when I said to her sister, I finally did something. She said, what did you do? I said, I drew the Mona Lisa. And I think this whole concept or notion of being a bride of somebody, and it doesn't have to be physical. But the bride of Christ is, for me, a person just like any other bride wants to be faithful. I want to remain faithful the best I can to the person who put me on this earth for a reason. The faithful spouse of the one who first created me and knew me long before I was in my mom's womb. Now, there are times, you know, you say, oh God, you know, I'd love, wish you had skin on, so I put my, wrap my arms around you. In 1965, I was one of those women dressed in the bridal dress. I think we were about 26 of us. The processional ceremony would have come right through here, and in the pews would be jam-packed with our relatives, only our parents or one grandparent maybe, very limited because of the large number of sisters we would have had. You'd get your bridal gown, which would be a hand-me-down or hand-me-over or give to or whatever. We had a whole collection of wedding dresses that probably were donated to the convent in big uh, fashion boxes. The day or two before the ceremony, we all went to these boxes and tried to pick out the one that we wanted for ourselves. Was there a fight, fight over the dresses? No fights over them, but some might have been too low or sleeves too short and adjustments had to be made so that we could cover our arms or cover our chests a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I believe in angels, everything I move. No, I'm no good, I can't get it. <laughs> I could have had the words before me, sure. But anyway, I don't.
Are you taking pictures now? Are you taking pictures now? Have you got any of me? Oh, yeah. In a way, we're shutting down. Some people say, are you sad about that? I say, I say no. I'm not sad about it. We're here for a time. We came here in 1833, and we gave our all. And the day is coming when we're not going to be able to do anything else because we don't have the woman power. Because when I entered, there was 23 of us, I think, and then it dwindled down, dwindled down. We haven't had anyone now for almost 25 years. I wonder who are the two people left to close the door. There are sisters out in the community. We have still convents where there are sisters. People outside there don't know what's going on inside this house. There are presently only six of us living here in this convent. Uh, that's a big fall in numbers because originally, when many of the sisters were studying and teaching, the house was divided into a lot of dormitories. And there were 70, 75 people here as part of the community. My little grandniece was here not long ago, and she said to me, oh, Marg, your television is some old. And I said, it is a bit old, isn't it? And then uh, she looked at this statue, and she wanted to know who that was. And I said, oh, that's her name is Mary, and uh, she was the mother of Jesus. Well, she said, is she dead? And I said, yes, she died. What did she die of? So I said, well, she probably died because, you know, uh, she was older. And she said, well, where is she now? <laughs> I went to school at um, uh, St. Teresa's in uh, Monday Pond from grades one to eight. And the sisters taught me uh, in that school. And I picked up a certain spirit, a certain mission from them. I would notice that, you know, if a student didn't have a lunch, well, you know, they would send to the convent and get one for them and in a storm. They always made sure that we had, you know, gloves and mitts and scarves and hats. You're going to have to come back again. Am I? I can leave Yes, because I got the trunk full. <laughs> God love you, sister. What we do without you, hey? I don't know. That's right, we don't know. You might, might be able to do better. <laughs> no, I, no worries. It's a lot of people who have yeah. been helped by the sisters. Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. I, I have a dream, a dream to sing, to make me cool with anything. I was entering the convent and mom invited uh, my grandmother and my uncle who lived in the house with her for dinner. And he, he gave me a big hug and he said, it's just like you're dying. You're going to the common. You're just like you're dying. That's what's happening. Is that your wedding ring finger? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure which is a wedding ring finger. But that's so part of, part of the what I'm talking about is being the bride of Christ yes, and yeah. the ceremony was that it was put on your wedding ring, I, right? I guess so. Yeah, I think in, in, yeah, in keeping with the bridal dress. Yeah. That's the same ring that I was put on my hand that morning on 19... 63. Kind of like a romantic notion to that, kind of, you know, being a bride of Christ? I don't, for me personally, I, I don't, uh, I don't have any memory of that being part of it. It is an intimate relationship, but it is not an intimate relationship that mirrors a marriage at all. No, I'm certainly not a bride of Christ. I have that imagery, um, it bothers me. Not only don't I accept it, but it actually bothers me. 
Have you ever come close to leaving because of, uh, of love? With, you know, with a partner? Oh my God, these questions. <laughs> Have I ever come close? Um, yeah, I guess there's times, Ken, yes, that I have been close. I was taught by the Presentation Sisters from grade one to grade 11. Opportunities were somewhat limited for women. You would either become a teacher or a nurse or a secretary. And I always wanted to become a teacher. I thought being a sister would be a way to be happy in my life. I always discerned, is this the life for me? And often have to say, I got some good help and some good guidance in processing uh, my issues uh, to be married and have children. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, I suppose I could say I was in love, but never in such a way that I saw the ideal person that I would spend the rest of my life with. Have you ever been in love with anybody? Yes, I have. Period. Yes, I've been in love a couple of times in my life, when I was a teenager, but at that point made a call to go into religious life. While I was a young sister, I was in love, deeply in love. Yeah, sure. What is in love, you know, and, and it's being attracted to someone and very often it's something because of their goodness, because they, they can click with you, they connect with you. So yes. Before I entered, I was in love. I liked this um, one young man a lot. Um, but he was dating another girl and, and he couldn't really break off the relationship with her or he didn't want to break off the relationship. It never came to anything. It was just a relationship of, uh, and different relationships. And I, I still fall in love with certain so people. So you say it never came to anything. Come on, tell us the truth. <laughs> Well, I'm from St. John's, here in St. John's, and I grew up over Southside Road. And when I got 18, I moved out on my own. And, like, I had a good, I had a hard time of it, you know. It, I went with the wrong kind of men, but, you know. But I'm on my own now for years, and I'm doing great. There we go, there's some of our, of our guests. There was a little nun in, in our congregation who used to feed the, the poor people. She was here in this, in our little place downstairs, and the poor people would come and she would love to feed them. Teresa, here's your water. And then finally it went to the gathering place where we have the new place down there now. But it all started from a little, little kindness. Hello, Mr. Moore. How are you? How are you? Hello, how are you? Social area for uh, our guests. They come here and uh, spend time just watching TV. They're just playing games with one another. Some people just might want to be alone and rest without any disturbance. The gathering place is like a home to me because nobody realizes how, how blessed you got it till you come here. They help you to get get your life back on track. When I first came here, I had a bad temper. I had a bad drinker problem. And what caused all that, do you think? I uh, couldn't tell you. <laughs> and I found that the doctors they have here, they're, 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 uh, and the nurses, They um, treat us very humanely with a lot of respect. Just gotta wipe my eyes. <clears throat> we follow the flame of the lantern. Its fire lights our way through the dark. We follow the flame. So deep in our hearts, we follow, though it be dark. The Cosmic Walk is an important work because the Cosmic Walk depicts 
the whole story of evolution from the from the big bang to the present four billion years ago the bacteria emerged and these little tiny insects these little bacteria were able to eat the toxic sunlight and the the uh, minerals in order to be able to bring better balance into the earth and photosynthesis began and do you know that these first little earthlings that were the bacteria they knew how to snack on and to eat the iron and the sunlight and other tasty minerals to form the toxic atmosphere and that was the one that supported the seas and eventually land what about God creating Earth? What happened to that? Well, it was, we look upon it as the energy of God that is flaring forth. It is, it, is, it is an energy, it's a mystery, and it's a different, it's an energy that we, no scientist yet knows where it came from. Does the church sanction all that? Or is this just you guys being renegades and, and uh... Being rebels, being a motorcycle, bad motorcycle gang, but none. I, uh, uh, that's what people were kind of thinking first when I started out. But, thanks be to God, 2015, Pope Francis sanctioned this work. You needed the Pope to do that? No, we didn't. You already believed in it. What do you need a man, a man in a white, white <laughs> outfit to, to we, confirm the work that you were doing I, already? I didn't, it wasn't to confirm it for myself, but it was to confirm it for all the rest of the crowd out there who were thinking that we were just dabbling with new age stuff. <laughs> That is a mistaken view that the sisters are subservient to priests and to bishops. I grew up in a very small fishing community and even as a little girl I was imagining how I should be doing things and how should I, who could I be making things better and I knew so many things that were too good to keep. So I, I knew I was going to be a teacher. From when I was four years old, I was going to be a teacher. But from grade two, I decided to be a teacher who was a nun. But I sensed that if I was a teacher with other teachers, we could do more together. We are our own corporation and we're our own uh, charitable institution, having charitable status. And we have to be true to the objectives of our institution. So therefore, we make our own decisions about what we need to do and how we need to do it. I call myself a feminist. I, I don't call myself an aggressive feminist, but I believe, I believe that being woman and uh, seeing the world from that particular perspective is a gift we bring. I spent six months at the United Nations and I remember working on uh, a clause to try to get women included in a document uh, so that women could have rights that I took for granted, education, property rights. We did have three very uh, gifted and well-educated women who worked within the archdiocese. They weren't well accepted because they were you know, asking the questions and uh, trying to move the priests and move the people along. It was easier to move the people than to move the priests. Those three women ended up resigning from those positions because they didn't feel that they were accepted. The majority of our guests were males and there were a few women. And of course, some of these women have had uh, really uh, traumatic experiences uh, with their male partners. I was like abused in every way. So whatever you want to think of, you put that in your head. It wasn't ritualistic abuse. It might have been in a way because 
they used to talk about God and religion and this person had no right to talk about God or religion while he was hurting me. I grew up in foster care where I had a lot of childhood trauma. I was, I was once addicted to crack cocaine, uh, morphine, demerol, oxycontin, you name whatever drugs out there, I was hooked on. I was shooting it. I ended up almost dying because I took one shot in the side of my neck. But I've been able to stay clean for 12 years. They can face their day a little bit better, I think, after being away and being uh, along with other women as well. They can share their own experiences. But they have a nice view from here as well. I find water can, can be very therapeutic too, just to watch the water and watch the, the ocean. It can really uplift the spirit. And my psychologist says, like, Kathy, when are you going to start putting yourself down? She said, keep yourself a pat on the back. I said, well, that's easier said than done. She said, well, that's all you know, was being back down. And now you're trying to scratch your way to the top. A billion years ago, the cells joined with each other for survival and development. So here we have sexual reproduction. The eye of the fish, we have the watery eye from the fish. 500 million years ago, the fish emerged and they formed a skeleton around the nervous system. And we have the backbone uh, and we have the digestive system and the, and the brain from the worms and the brain from the fish as well. You know what I hate about our society? We see children as almost people and old people as they used to be people. We as a society treat older people abysmally. We do not treat older people as persons. That's one of our um, ministries and obligations that, you know, we, we look after the sisters in their uh, later years. There's a, there's a nursing station and, uh, you know, equipped, and there's uh, two doctors who uh, come to the facility when, uh, when needed, and they have uh, the services of uh, a beautician and uh, podiatry, and they have um, a recreational program. If I can do something to share my story so that somebody else with a disability can go on with their lives because they are more than their disability, the sisters and all those who can, the staff, they support me, and they support me in many ways. They're not, as we used to say, cuddling over me. If I say, no, I can do that. I have a, what I call a phone ministry within the CNIB community, and there are X number of people I call on a regular basis that I know who are lonely, who are going through difficult times, and just would like someone to, to give them a call. I take in Tai Chi, I take in we have music here, we have yoga. We're so, so blessed here. Over a two-year period uh, in recent history, we had uh, 14 who died. But over the last uh, two years, uh, we've had six who died. We had five sisters who died uh, during the COVID, but not with COVID. And we had one sister who died last, last week.
We are not invincible. Goodness, God created out of goodness, and all that he made was good, or all that she made, or all that we have is good. 233 million years ago, we have the uh, dinosaurs. Now, they were the most successful. They were the largest creatures on Earth at this time. But at the same time, the smaller creatures were coming into being as well, and we have the flowers appeared and all the different arrays of colors. 260 million years ago, the first mammals walked the Earth. And these are smaller creatures now, but they were uh, becoming conscious of caring for the young and of being, uh, and being together as a community. I had taught for uh, probably about 25 years, but always had a, a passion and a desire to work in prison ministry. None of the studies you do ever prepares you for the first time, like I saw a woman shackled and, and chained. We get a parking place. It was just like I became paralyzed when I saw her. Many times I listened to the women tell their stories of how they had to be strip searched when they entered the prison. There was very little programming or um, other activities for the women, so I developed programs in personal growth and anger management and arts and crafts. There was a woman from northern Labrador and she had committed incest with her 14-year-old boy. And when she was in the prison there, she chose to be isolated from the rest of the women because they would give her a very hard time. I would just sit there in silence if she wanted to be in silence or I was there if she wanted to talk. And finally she was uh, discharged from the prison and she went back to her home in Northern Labrador. And she was only home for uh, a few months when I heard that uh, she hung herself. And um, I took that really hard. Bye-bye. One woman said, uh, Sister, uh, right now, she said, even though it's February and there's snow, she said, I'm sleeping by my mother's graveside because she said, I don't have housing. And at least I think I'll be safe there, close to my mother in the cemetery. We never thought of the nuns as being normal. They were different. They were a world apart. They're dressed in this weird outfit. Uh, we didn't know anything about them. We didn't know they had ears even. I was a religious little girl. Myself and my mother used to often go out to devotions at the church. And we prayed the rosary in our family and going to school with the sisters all my life. Sisters came to Holy Heart and they did a pageant uh, about vocation and the call. Your classmates were entering, there were other people around you, and that, that you know, you weren't alone in making that decision. A lot of, of younger women entered, so you had your, your class kind of thing who, who entered together. How does that continue when you guys are gone? But, <laughs> how does it continue? It's a good question. Um... Why did we stop recruiting? The implication, if we had continued recruiting, we would continue having more women become sisters. Not only you, our sisters say, why did we stop our vocation programs? I don't think that our lives were ever about recruiting. I think our lives were about trusting that God provided the people that we needed for the time when we needed them, and people responded to the call that they received. But there's no like information sessions, there's no reach out to youth to... No. Why? Why is that? 
Well, I think just because it's never been done. If you put up, say, uh, an ad on Facebook, are you interested in becoming a nun or a mm -hmm. sister? Come to this room, do you think no one would show up? I don't know. It's, we, we, it's, a long, it's a long time since we did any recruitment. Come explore the possibilities of joining the sisterhood. Right? And you set a date for it and a time. Don't you think people would show up? No. I resent the, uh, the uh, allegation that it's our failure to recruit that is bringing religious life to an end. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think it's respectful of us as women. But where do you find the young women that you're going to place that address to? In ads, Facebook. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I agree with you. But that's not where we're at. Coming to religious life is a call from God. And that comes out of our deep faith. We believe that. that you really think that though, really? Yes, I you do. You think it's not a sit you were not on a track as a Catholic in a school system yes. that existed. Yeah, I, I understand it's marketing, but. And you still have a calling. Yes. It's just that you don't know it yet because you haven't seen the ad. <laughs> they're doing it intentionally? Well, they're not recruiting. Well, maybe they're still off that they're disappearing. They say no one has a calling anymore. No one has what? A calling to like to be a sister, to want to be a sister. Yeah, but they don't know that. That's just what's in their heads. They don't know that. Only God knows that. He's the only one. Maybe that's what they think. Maybe they maybe they maybe their faith has died in that far. It's gotta be awfully traumatic for the sisters already alive. That has got to be traumatic. While seeing people disappear from their midst. But having said that though, maybe not so much because they place their complete trust in Jesus, in God. Explain to me then, how did, how did the people in, in our community, in our congregation, who came to us who never saw sisters in their life, how did they get here? I thought they must have heard about them. Very little. I mean, they, how did they find you if they didn't know? Well, that's why I said it's faith. Well, obviously, uh, if that is the case and people are still being called, we haven't been doing a very good job uh, encouraging. Once the North American society developed that robust middle class that provided all kinds of options for women that we no longer had the same need for the kind of religious life that I came into. It was about 8.30 at night, and from one of the moms, her, her son was in the hospital. Didn't want to see anybody, didn't want to see family, didn't want to see priests, didn't want to see friends. And she called me, she said, Sister, Ron said, that he would like for you to come in and say a prayer with him, okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't know who he was. He was semi-conscious and I prayed with him and I looked up at him and we, we chatted and I thanked him for, for giving me the opportunity to come and pray with him. I went home and he died shortly after. And that night I lost my sight. To this day, they cannot determine what happened. It was frightening for me because when he, when he told me I was legally blind and there's nothing he can do, I used to cry myself to sleep every night. Why? Why me? I had to go through this, all uh, this pain. Part of our uh, uh, dining room and uh, kitchen area, and they have a full meal. They've come for breakfast, they have dinner, and they also have a, a supper. Sir, what can I get you for? This lady served uh, the other day for lunch. Was it over 250? Definitely over 250. Over 250 people. Like the property down here is unreal. And that, that's, that's usually on a day like today. Uh, nice and uh, not raining and stuff. That's usually a normal lunch and supper. Yeah.
The food is excellent here. I don't complain. I says I goes to the uh, get staff and thanks them. I say thank you very much for the food. I appreciate it. All that you do for me. Hundred fifty million years ago, and have the birds and their ability to fly, which is a leftover from the flying dinosaur world. 25 million years ago, whales, the first uh, singing, first songs, you had the whales and, and the first line of communication. They had a, a way of communicating, a way of singing, so their voice was heard before the human voice. We are the youngest creatures here on this earth and all of this went ahead of us to form a part of who we are. My mother died when I was seven and we were three children left and my father married again and the second family was they had 12 children. We just had a one room school and it was one teacher and she sort of taught everything and there was nothing in the arts. But when the sisters came, we had, we had uh, music, we had choirs, we had drama. Our sisters right from the beginning, they were uh, really concerned about promoting fine arts and music, painting, uh, embroidery, any kind of art, drama, they were always involved in that. I did paintings, I did jewellery, and I did necklaces. And what I did, I gave them to my friends. They, they said to me, my, you did a good job. Did you buy them? I said, no, I didn't buy them, I made them. What? You made them? I said, yes, I made them. I made de them ne that necklace and arm braces for you. They couldn't believe it. I began teaching voice and it gave me the most satisfaction that I ever had in teaching. Just when I trained the girls to hear them, five or six voices coming together and doing a harmony, that was the most thrilling part of it. And there were six, uh, five other choirs, and we were first. One of the musicians that were present at, uh, at our, when we sang in Ottawa, he said, I can't compare it to anything but the Berlin Orchestra. I cried in the audience, he said, I had to, and there was a lot of other people crying too. So we must have sang something that touched their hearts. I used to think, you know, maybe if I had gotten married, I would love to have family. I think that's a kind of a, it's not really a regret, but it's, uh, it's a loss. Although I had many nieces and nephews, I wasn't bereft of childcare or children, but. Uh, your own babies. Your own babies, yeah. That's, that's a loss, yeah. Um, that I was never obsessed with having children. Like some of the sisters find that a real loss in their life. It didn't seem like such an exciting venture. 
you know, it was nice to play with the children, to talk with them, and to teach them, and to interact with them. And But then it's nice when you close the classroom door and bye-bye. It was a Sunday afternoon, and it was a beautiful afternoon, and the cars were going back and forth. And, and somehow that reality struck me, you know, that I'm never going to have a partner and I'm never going to have children. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a difficult reality to, to think about that. My little nephew, probably back in the early 70s, and he noticed I had no children. And he said to me, Betty Ray, where are your children? I said, I don't have any. And he, and he said, why? I said, because I'm not married. He said, well, you should know by now, you don't have to be married to have children. And there's how many people here living, living in this house? There are two of us. Anyway, come on in. <coughs> you can tell me about all the wild parties you have here too, like yeah. the, two, the two of you. Yeah. Any visitors who come by, and it's a, kind of a, just a cosy meeting room. And of course, like all convents, it used to be the piano room. I had a very normal childhood and my, my brother, who was next to me in family, says, Lorraine, for the love of God, you don't remember a blessed thing. Did you grow up with us or what? We didn't have phones in my day. We didn't have electric lights. I left in September, and that following April, the lights came through those. So they kicked you out, and they brought in electricity. So yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I could look at that another way. I was so electrified that they had to, <laughs> they had to make a substitute, so they brought in the electricity. The simplicity, you had your prayer, you said the family rosary, you went to church. For us, the big thing was a Friday night dance or a garden party. You played cards, you danced, you joked, whatever. And that was, was the norm. We have our kitchen, which is always a hub of any House. Of course. And uh, this is where you make your tea buns. Very functional. Oh yes. You guys all had salaries from being when you were teachers, hey? Oh yes, yes, you got your teachers. And what happened to that? Did you get to keep any of it? Oh no, the... no, 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 no. That was that was general fund. You didn't even see it. How about you want to buy a pack of chewing gum? Well, you you had what you call your monthly allowance. Like, you want to go out to a movie or you want to go out to dinner. You're not allowed to do that, are you? You're supposed to be locked down, aren't you? No. We're normal. You can't natural. go see movies. We're no normal way. and natural. How progressive is that? That's well, too progressive. Yeah, right. We didn't have the exposure to all the stuff that's available today. You could, <laughs> you could be satisfied with less. Why do I buy a, a new blouse when I've already 10 in my closet? And if I use only one every day for the week, I still have two weeks and then I can rotate all over again. And still, I, I feel that I got to have that blouse because it just came out new. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But for the individual that's trapped, in that it's living and life. Having said that, Black Friday is coming up. <laughs> the theology was all built around the human as the center of the universe. 460 years ago, Copernicus discovered that the sun was the center of the known world and not Earth. 
we emerged out of the life of the chaos and the molten rock and the, the light, the energy of light that's alive in each one of us. We were once molten rock and now we're singing opera. See? <laughs> Down here is a, a facility where we can accommodate uh, about 25, 23, 25 males in the night. In the other room we have five for women. It helps to get people off the street. Some of them have to uh, sleep in parks and in alcoves of buildings. We live in a broken world, but that doesn't mean that we have to stay broken. And. Uh, we can heal each other and I think when healing each other we also heal ourselves. I look at a child, well, a child was born, this pure child, I mean, a gorgeous little baby, and what happens along the way? What happens to that person that they have such difficulties in life and they have to deal with such awful situations? Were they not loved enough? Did they accept love? Were they given dignity? Were they given any support? You're meeting people whose hearts were broken right at birth. Why do you allow some people to be born in hell? And they act out like they're in hell for their, all their lives. If there is a paradise, they should be going first. It's a lot of pain, hey? How do, you, how do you learn to deal with that without having to mask it with something? Um, you talk to people, you uh, look at all the positives and the good things, and the family and the friends, and you think about what they would go through if you weren't around. There will always be people, no matter how good the programs are, there will always be people who will fall through the cracks. But the numbers at the gathering place now, uh, that speaks to me of something very, very wrong systemically. The greater the pity is that we have to have a gathering place. The problem is that uh, there's not enough places like this. From what we're hearing from people that are coming back and can't get into the place, half place, half place, because they're full. They often talk about who are going to be the last two sisters to close oh, the yeah. door. Uh, yes. What do you yeah. think of that? Wow. <laughs> It's almost like a death in a way and, and a loss for us. Um, even as we have to, you know, say goodbye to certain ministries that are important to us. But it's, um, it's a hard reality. If I've had an especially hard day, maybe I went to court with uh, one of the men or the women that, you know, I've been working with and things probably didn't go well in court. It's like I can go to the ocean and it's like a lot of my feelings get washed out in, in the uh, undertow that's, uh, that's there. I got this call on Monday morning asking me if I had heard that there was a woman missing. So I was really shaken by this news. Taxi driver came forward and said that he had driven her to Flat Rock at 3 a.m. in the morning and she had her dog with her in a cage and she told him that she was going to visit one of her friends but um, when she didn't turn up at home after a while, one of her friends went to her house to check on her and her door was open, her car was there and her car keys were there. And I think there were a number of notes throughout the week. You know, all, all I could picture was her with her little dog, you know, walking down toward the ocean.
I don't think anyone can be alive and could be lonely in the universe if they're connected to all of this. Well, in, in, in some individual, they're just lying calmly and nothing seems to be happening. There's, you can hardly see them breathe. And then there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just stillness. Others, there's that little um, I don't know if you call it a twitch, but it's it's that little something like a holding on, but not holding on. And then for others, there's that time when they just seem to open their eyes and look around, and then there's no more. We are now entering the cemetery of the Sisters of Mercy. When someone in the congregation dies, uh, it's, it's a very heavy burden uh, for us because we've known these sisters for so long. I fear death. I have to say that um, when we have this discussion sometimes with, uh, with the sisters, you know, some people are really confident and secure about um, dying, whereas for me, it's, uh, it's a little bit more scary. You're assuming I'm going to die. Um, I used to think about that sometimes. God and I have an arrangement that when I die, I'm not going to be getting up till 12 o'clock in the day. I love sleeping in. And secondly, I can, all those murder stories I didn't get a chance to read, I'm going to have a chance to read. I'm going to be with God and, and all the other people that have gone ahead of me. That I'm, I believe that. I, I believe that's the promise. In my head, I'm not afraid, in my heart, but in reality, not yet. <laughs> I want to meet all my ancestors, all the women from whom I descended, the Woodmans and the Newhooks and the Martinez's and the whoever's. Um, it's going to be great. This heaven is up there and hell is down there. I, I don't think I'm into that theology anymore. Heaven is where we create and where there's love and where God is, there is love. I'm not scared to die. In our uh, Catholic tradition, we believe in what we call the communion of saints, that somehow we are united with the, the people who have gone before us. Now, how that works itself out, I'm not quite sure, but I like that concept of the communion of saints. I had a sister who was uh, diagnosed with uh, cancer, and uh, during the, during the times that uh, she was having her treatment, um, I, I used to pray to my mom, who was also deceased, to, uh, to look after her and uh, keep her safe. And <clears throat> it was interesting that both my my sister, who had cancer, and myself, we were having the same dreams about my mother and my, my mother keeping her safe. And uh, it was just so remarkable that, you know, when we shared the dreams that we both were having the uh, the same dreams. Mm. So. I had a friend, she's dead now, uh, who uh, had a great belief in life after death as, 
as uh, being reconnected with her mom and her dad and her loved ones and her friends. I said, that's fine. I said, sure, but you could be a leaf on a tree in Australia. Who knows? And she used to be so annoyed with me. When I die, You gave me a good question. But I think you'll be happy. I think it'll be a place of happiness. It's a good, good question to think about. When the Alman sisters who are in the 70s or 80s pass on, there's no more sisters. That's it. Are you serious? Please don't say that. Don't like it. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Most people know nothing about you guys anymore. No. Because you have disappeared and are disappearing. That's true, you're right. So now we have to look at then, well, what are we going to do to make ourselves visible and out there? See, I told you, uh, you can do it. You don't put yourself down and say you can't do it. You got to try. You can't give up. The whole universe is in us. It's alive, we're alive in the universe. And we give the universe expression to what it is. I will ask. I will ask for Adam. Yeah. Yeah. 
septum exactoris eius, superastis sicut in diem adia, quia omnis violenta pretatio cum tu Thank you.